Now, look, there's no question who's got the advantage in firepower in the Middle East confrontation. Israel is vastly better armed and equipped than the Palestinian militants, including Hamas in the Gaza Strip, which has sent over well over a thousand rockets into Israel. Doesn't mean the Palestinian fighters don't pose a threat. Let me welcome Dr. Andreas Krieg, a defence expert at King's College London's School of Security Studies. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Give me, give me an appraisal, if you can, of the Palestinian side capacity to inflict damage and death. No, absolutely. I mean, there, it is it is obviously an uneven fight. We always call this an asymmetric conflict. Uh, but we also need to understand that obviously Hamas and, and other um, militia forces within the Gaza Strip control several thousands of different types of missiles. And some of them have quite, you know, are becoming more and more sophisticated from what we, we used to. So a couple of you know, a decade ago, even, um, you know, we're looking at mostly Qassam rockets, which are which are locally built and had a very limited range and had a very small warhead. What we're seeing today is obviously a more sophisticated Qassam rockets, which are built locally. But we also have a range of external uh, weaponry and technology coming in from Iran, which has quite a, a far, um, you know, far reach. And we've seen drones that have been fired a couple of hours ago, which are kind of suicide drones, which also reach targets, some of them as far as Elat. So we're seeing hundreds of kilometers in terms of range, pretty much all of Israel is it can be reached um, and obviously there's one other thing I mean this is it's not just quality but it's also quantity so Hamas has quite a lot of quantity of missiles that they can fire at Israel and do so um, at long range and obviously have quite a lot of technology to uh, fight at Israeli uh, yeah. troops on the ground in close range. Yes and, and Israel has its iron dome defense system a kind of radar controlled shield in the sky which gets the overwhelming majority catches the overwhelming number mm. of these rockets but it can't catch all of them there is still a danger. Tell, tell me, Andres, what happens if and when it comes to ground fighting, if those tanks and troop carriers cross the border into Gaza? I mean, just a, a few words on the Iron Dome system. It isn't. It is effective, but it's obviously not effective when it's overwhelmed. I mean, the the misunderstanding that we always have when we look at and missile defense systems is that we think they're kind of literally an Iron Dome that kind of keep everything protected underneath. That's obviously not the case, and it only works really at a certain distance. So whatever happens within Gaza, so as soon as U.S. Uh, as Israeli troops would move in, they would immediately uh, become targets for a range of different small arms and 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 mortars and and. And, and artillery um, and short-range uh, guided missiles that the that Hamas has. Um, the problem of that is obviously, and that is one of kind of the the, the worst-case scenario that Israel always wants to avoid. They wanted to avoid it in 2014, but at, at that time in 2014, you had uh, three Israeli uh, kids being kidnapped, and obviously for that, you know, the Israelis were willing to pay quite a high price to get them back. Um, we don't have that situation now. Um, we are in a situation of of of, of a worst type scenario of urban combat, very densely populated areas um, where, you know, Israeli, even special forces who are well trained in combat forces that have now been mobilized, um, will find it very, very difficult to operate in because the enemy is waiting everywhere and it's kind of appear from from anywhere. There are tunnels underneath the city. Yeah. Um, and even if you go in with armored vehicles, these armored vehicles can be pierced. So it's not really a, a kind of scenario where you want to go in in order to seize any objectives. Andreas Krieg. Uh, from King's College London School of Security Studies. Thank you for, for giving us that expert uh, take on what is happening and what may yet happen.